It's a slow news week, but we still have little things. And we take a look at Universal's 10 Things You Must Do at City Walk. This is episode 502 of the unofficial Universal Orlando podcast. Hey everyone! Welcome to the sick show. <laughs> At least two of the four of us are currently dying. One of us has COVID. I will let you figure out who it is. I want everyone to message in right at the end of this show and tell me who you we think should. has COVID. One of us tested positive for COVID about an hour and a half ago. And I want you to tell me who you think it is. It's kind of like that game we played with Kieran and Pippa and yeah. Sam last night. <laughs> Email in and see if you can tell me who you think's got COVID. Yeah. We'll, we'll throw a poll up. How about that? <laughs> yeah. Funny. Uh, I am here with Tracy. Yeah, hello, everyone. And Chris. Hey. And Michelle. Howdy. The gang's back together. Were we missing? I'm trying to think. Were we all together last time? I feel like... What did we do? I don't even know what we did to... Oh, yeah, we did. I it don't was, know. It yes, was did. our 500 and 500 yes. cost where we were all together. <laughs> and um, we all forgot about the 500th episode. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> it's been a long two weeks. It has. Um, speaking of which... You still have time to get your rankings for Universal Studios Florida in if you want to um, sway the vote for the rankings. That So basically, like we did last week, when you guys to do the same and email them as, to us at podcast at uupodcast.com. Because we haven't actually had that many. I'm slightly disappointed. Hmm. But for now, we shall pass it over to Seth for little things. Hi, this is Seth Kaberski, co-author of The Unofficial Guides. And I'm back with a brief look at all the little things that are new around the Universal Orlando Resort for mid-April of 2022. I'd like to kick off this installment by giving a shout out to Jeremy Froebel for giving me a heads up on some of these items. He's keeping up with what's new at Universal Orlando in a column for the UUOP website that you should go and check out. Okay, the first little thing at Universal Orlando is that the Welcome to Universal Orlando Resort signage that usually greets guests as they enter CityWalk is currently missing in action. Presumably the sign is getting a well-needed refurbishment and will hopefully be back soon. Until then, you might be a little confused about which resort you're at as you're walking in. (laughs) Next, we're coming up on Easter and the spring break crowds have hit Universal Orlando in full force. This past weekend, we saw the valet parking closed by noon. They even brought out extra metal detectors to help deal with security in the parking hub, though I have not seen them using the Evolve walkthrough scanners like Disney has that were being tested last year. You definitely want to be prepared for big crowds and long waits if you are visiting the parks this week. You also want to be prepared if you are going to be there on the 29th or the 30th of April for Grad Bash. That's the high school graduation parties that are held late at night in the parks. Select parks will be closing early on those nights, and the kids show up by mid-afternoon and definitely make their presence known. So (laughs) beware if you're planning attending on the 29th or 30th of this month. Here's some quick Kid Zone updates. The paving project outside the entrance to Kid Zone, which has been going on for several months, is still continuing, and refurbishment is also happening on portions of Fivel's playground still. However, the rest of the play area is still open, including the water slide. And if you head back into Kid Zone, you'll spot a new photo op display that has been put up for the DreamWorks film The Bad Guys, which comes out on April 22nd. A couple quick food notes. The toppings bar is back at Burger Digs in Jurassic Park at Islands of Adventure. However, the toppings bar for the Richter's restaurant in the San Francisco area of Universal Studios Florida has not returned. Also, I recently tried the meatless shepherd's pasty pie, which is now offered at the Magic Neep outside Three Broomsticks in Hogsmeade, and I really enjoyed it. If you are a vegan and looking for a savory snack, give it a shot. Speaking of savory snack, I spotted something new in the Williams of Hollywood prop shop over in Universal Studios Florida. They have some corn dog cart signage that was on sale for $200. Price has now been slashed down to just $100. So if you want a reminder of your last Universal corn dog, go into Williams prop shop and pick it up before someone else does. (laughs) 
Recently, mm. Walt Disney World made national news by announcing that they were bringing back hugs and face-to-face meet and greet with characters starting April 18th. Well, I'm happy to let you know that that is already starting at Universal Orlando. Some characters, such as Krusty the Clown over by the Simpsons ride, are still behind barriers, but I spotted Popeye, Olive Oil, and Betty Boop, as well as Captain America in Islands of Adventure, all getting up close and personal with guests. So time to grab those autograph books and get ready to hug the characters once again. And last but not least, I have what might be the final nail in the coffin of Virtual Line at Universal Orlando. It seems that even though this would be the perfect time to bring back Virtual Line options to manage queues in the parks during the busy spring break period, the Virtual Line features have now been completely removed from Universal's smartphone app. And team members at attractions like Fast and Furious, Jimmy Fallon, and Toronto Don Flyers tell me that their virtual line systems are now completely dead and they don't expect them to return. The only ride that might still use virtual line is Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure. If available, you'll find those at the website vltest.universalorlando.com instead of in the smartphone app. But even that has not been in use during this past very busy weekend. Okay, that'll wrap it up for this week. I'll be back in another couple weeks with more little things. Until then, you can find my books, including The Unofficial Guide to Universal Orlando, at theunofficialguides.com, or find me on Twitter at the UG Series. And until next time, I'm Seth Kaberski, keeping an eye on all those little things at Universal Orlando for you. Does anyone find it strange that they haven't put some sort of temporary signage at the front of the parks, like in City Walk? Like to remove yeah. that completely of being it's such a big photo op and not put yeah. something temporary there? Yeah, but what, like a paper signage? <laughs> Anything. <laughs> like, it looks so cheesy, though. Like a flag. <laughs> a flag? Do we a think flag. it's just getting a refurb or are we rebranding? Hmm. <coughs> a beat Maybe uh, they could brand? be doing like font upgrades as well. But if that's the case, if it's going to be a completely different sign, surely you make that before you take the other one down and just put it up. Yeah, that is true. So. Yeah, true. Well, and that's not the only place that that particular like logo is used for signage. It's all over, right? Like the font and everything, it's used at all of the. Um, yeah. the roads direction you know directional signs uh, for yeah. entry to the but hmm. I mean realistically let's say it is the refurb what what exactly are they refurbing because <laughs> you wouldn't have thought they get like scuffed or anything because it's not like anyone's no. handling them Fair exactly the sun. Yeah, true and I take one every single time we go of like course. it's our thing right and we've never said like hey that needs some work done to it no because it's far <laughs> enough away that you're not going to notice anything but this is the picture no, but even have, when though. you pass under it I mean it doesn't look it didn't look bad so I'm just curious like what kind of refurb can you actually do you're going to clean the back of the letters <laughs> I wonder how long it's been down because maybe something happened to it during these latest rounds of storms maybe so I know they took the I think it was the universal part of it down first. There was, it, there, I remember seeing a picture of it. Funnily enough, Seth mentioned it there. And I, I like the way that Seth's the one that plugs the Jeremy's blog post, yeah. uh, which I probably should have done myself. Um, but I'm sure at least two weeks ago, part of it was down and now it's all gone. So they didn't even do it like all in one go. Mm hmm. I'm just, look, you know me. Maybe something got damaged. I was going to say, maybe, yeah, maybe they yeah. re- like repaired something on one part and the whole thing got damaged. You know me, I'm a theme park conspiracy theorist and it's like I do have things rattling around my head that whether they're going to change things once Epic Universe because that disconnect between Epic Universe it's a bit, and Universal Orlando Resort. It's a bit soon to be changing signs well, for that though. That's the only thing that kind of makes me yeah. think it probably however, isn't. However, or Universal is, no. it is the time to take a photograph at that yes. point. Yes. Because when was the last time you saw that <laughs> bear? Welcome to where are you? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to here. Everyone posting it all on the Facebook and it's like, oh where are you? I love all those uh oh, like yes. the memes that people have been doing like yes. on the past alter page. It's awesome. For sure. Yeah. There's some very creative people out there. Yeah. 
Maybe Universal Escape is coming back. Who knows? <laughs> I think they learned the lesson on that. <laughs> and they're like, oh, another park. Let's try it one more time. <laughs> I know it's not in here, and I'm not sure whether we talked about it two weeks ago, but the preview merch for Horror Nights this year, what's your thoughts, guys? I know they've only released like the T-shirt and the Christmas bauble, which I have someone picking me up because apparently they're limited edition. I do love that bauble. Yes. It looks cool. It's awesome. Yeah. I like them. I like the the merch. Yeah. I, li- I like it, but I won't wear it because I don't wear black. No. So I'm, hoping I'm not crazy about color. the ringer style, but no, I'm I like the... Yeah. yeah, I'm the same. It's a bit... At least it's red yeah. and not white. A lot of them, a lot of the mm. universal ones are white and black. Yeah, which is a bummer because sometimes they put some awesome designs on ringer shirts. Yeah. And I just can't come to making myself buy a ringer. It's just my preference. I don't like them. It really is a slow yeah. news week, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's all coming up tomorrow. That's it why. is. When Seth when Seth resorts to putting in things about a corn dog sign. <laughs> Yeah. I think that's a slow news week. <laughs> it is. And it's funny because we normally say it every two weeks. It's like they keep pumping out stuff for us to talk about and there's really nothing. It's, yeah, it's been quiet. I mean, the character meet and greets, I suppose, is a big deal. And it looks like, again, that Universal have, have won up Disney and got in there before them. I know someone posted in one of the annual pass holder groups today uh, their daughter hugging Beetlejuice. So Beetlejuice is doing like yeah. up close and personal as well. So, I mean, that's awesome. Yeah, that Beetlejuice character does like to get up close and personal. Yes. Particularly with females. <laughs> <laughs> what you yeah. Every time we go to take a picture of him, he just grabs Alexa and hugs her. I'm like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> chill, dude. <laughs> it's a very big deal for Disney. Like, really? I can't tell you how many people are happy about that. How many people yeah, have delayed their trips. There, right? Yeah. Well, the children, like the, yeah, the yeah, yeah. kids that want to meet the princesses and things. It's a big deal over there so that's that's good news for the covid front yeah because character meets aren't we've said this before character meets aren't a huge thing at universal really no. are they although wh- which which vlog did we watch and there was that was about character meets and i pointed out that it was quite strange that the the characters that were you could actually get up close and touch oh was it i the, think it was, was it uh no it was the despicable three wasn't oh, it was it yeah um so the one the characters you can get up to close are the face characters, yet the ones with the big heads on like Hello yeah. Kitty, you've still got a barrier around. So I was kind of like, that seems a bit weird. <laughs> so the ones that can, yeah. uh, you're more likely to get COVID off of the ones or that... Or give to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is a bit odd. I just found that a little weird. There's but... got to be a reason. Because yeah, because like you said, Sideshow Bob and the Simpsons are behind a thing, yet you can go meet Beetlejuice. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But I then against Beetlejuice, you know. I wonder what the reason behind himself. that is. Maybe it's up to, um, I mean, could also be up to the character themselves, whether they feel comfortable on Maybe. hugging. Possibly. I, it was just something I saw. In that. I, mean, I don't know when that was recorded, though. So From The beginning of March, did they go? They were there for Mardi okay, Gras, so, so it's recent. Was, so that could have just been like the start of it, but still, it's still strange well, not that Seth way around. said that those characters, like Sideshow Bob, as yeah. behind a barrier, yeah. and yet... Very strange. We're really yeah. scraping the bottom of the barrel, aren't we? There's literally I mean, we're talking there. about the toppings <laughs> bar at the Burger Dig, so... Hey, that's you know. a big deal. You're topping yourself at the fixings bar. <laughs> just skip the burger. Just put a salad on your plate. Yeah. They're a big deal, Could those it, toppings bars, though, really weren't they for people. Oh, yeah. Well, like, everyone had... I love toppings Yeah, bars. everyone had their sort of way of getting as much as you possibly could, like making decent burgers for as cheap as you possibly can. With sneezes and coughs in them. Well, that's, I mean, that's the secret ingredient, Tracy. Snot. COVID. Mm, yeah. yeah. A side of COVID. Mm. <laughs> Delicious. Uh. So anyway, I suppose the big thing amongst this all really is virtual line. Now, not having really used it, Michelle and Chris, big deal it going away or not? No. It's kind of a pain in the ass, to be honest with you. Because like when we would try to get for, let's say, the mummy, like it would just be gone. 
And then they tell you like, oh, check back at 1.30 or 3.30 and check for this and that. And it's, I don't know. I know it it's seemed kind of to be seeing a lot of posts in the annual pass holder groups of people trying to get a virtual line from Hagrid's and people just not being able to get them. Yeah, like when I was there with Audrey last November when she had never been on Hagrid's before, like we were willing to wait in a long line um, just so that she could ride it. But it wasn't an option. You had to have a virtual queue. So we literally spent two straight days waste like thinking about hardly anything else but that stupid virtual queue yeah. and spending so much time trying to grab one throughout the day that it was just a pain in the butt. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. we would have rather waited in a three hour long line. Just let yeah. us in line. You know where you are then you can just chill out and Yeah. Yeah. We spent way more than three hours on our phone trying to get virtual queues. Yeah. So still... I'm I'm okay with them going bye bye. It's funny, isn't it, with you look at fast pass and express pass and lightning lane and virtual lines and all the things that let's let's talk universal and disney that have tried to come up with over the years to allow and i'm not going to say alleviate people's waiting line because that's not why they're doing it they want people out in the shops and restaurants and stuff right but the things they've tried to put in place to to alleviate lines and they still haven't figured it out no Express Pass is the best system in the entire theme park industry. And it works. Yes. So why don't people just use it like at other parks? I don't I don't understand. Because no Disney don't want to feel like they're copying off Universal, so they've come up with their own and and I've heard nothing and it people sucks. Yep. I haven't heard anybody say anything good about it yet. I mean, I'll be honest, it's kind of stressing me out a little bit because we're time with the idea of going, not time with the idea, but we are going to go for one day at Hollywood Studios, the park where Lightning Lane's probably going to play the biggest part in our trip. And I just, I don't want to spend extra money. I've already paid to get in your park. I don't want to spend extra money to ride yeah, on the one ride that, that you an need to ride. my friend. It's just ridiculous, though. It's, it just shows, and I know people are going to be like, oh, here's Lee again, Disney bashing, but it just shows them as a company that they are trying mm-hmm. to squeeze every last dime out of its guests. We've been saying that for 10 years. Mm-hmm. But they're doing it. That's a personal it, experience. It used to be kind of hidden. Now it's blatant no, in your face. Yeah, we've said that. Well, yeah. Again, just got it that goes book back to its, its new management. So. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Well, and a lot of people are um, defending Disney with Universal saying, well, look, look how much... Universal charges for their express passes and you guys are complaining about $15 a person, blah, blah, blah. And you have to say, yeah, but Universal's express passes are literally unlimited and you don't have to book anything. Like you just walk up and ride whatever the hell you want to when you want to. That is not what Genie Plus is. And mm-hmm. it's not what the fast pass system before that was either. Like you had to spend a lot of your day like planning ahead and crisscrossing the park uh-huh. and um with express passes it's like the most freeing experience ever and i would gladly pay for yes. them you cannot mm-hmm. compare the two right because you mm-hmm. go let's let's do express it's cheapest option you go and book a night at the hard rock hotel at a quietish time you're paying let's say 350 dollars for four people mm-hmm Let's just for round two it days. up. Yeah, let's round yeah. it up. Let's say four hundred. You pay four hundred bucks for for one night, and you're getting two days of unlimited express for a hundred dollars each. Yep. Uh huh. And that a allows night in a you, nice hotel. Yep. That allows you to ride every ride, pretty much every ride in both parks. Yep. In express lines for two days, so fifty dollars a day each. Uh huh. So how many rides at Disney are you paying for at Lightning Lane for that 50 bucks a day? Three? Three and at change. Dis- at Disney, the park that, that it works the best at is Magic Kingdom, and that's because there's so many options. But it doesn't work great at the other parks. Well, Animal Kingdom, it works 
decent, but like Hollywood Studios, for instance, there's not a huge, a, a big list of attractions available. I would say there's um, more at Hollywood Studios than there is at Animal n- Kingdom. No, there's not. If you look at the list of like Lightning Lane options, there's there's not. I cannot I mean, think. If you what's count at Animal in Kingdom? Shows, what's it? Yeah, if you, count if you know, shows. if you just count and ride, what's at Animal Kingdom? Navi River Adventure, um, Flight of Passage, Expedition Everest, the Dinosaur Safari, safari. and that five. Yeah, um, and primeval. No, it's not even there anymore, is it? The, the dinosaur ride, Triceratops fin. Um, you said dinosaur. It's the six. The six. And at Hollywood Studios for the regular Lightning Lane, there's only shows, Tower of Terror, uh, Millennium Falcon, surely, exp- <laughs> um, rock and roller coaster, Star Tours. Rock and roller coaster and Star Tours, yeah. There's uh, Mickey is Mickey a mini or is that a light? No, that's a purchased one. And so is Slinky Dog a purchased one? <sighs> it's a Toy so, Story like, Mania, yeah. Yeah, like the top rides that you want to do are the pay for ones. You got to pay for them anyway. See, I hate that. Yeah. I just ugh. so because Michelle, you have you actually ridden Rise of the Resistance yet? Oh yeah. Once. Um. No, about. Four times now. And how many times have you visited, though? Because you went for at least two or three trips where you didn't get on it, yep. didn't you? Correct. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Like you, the, So the whole argument that um, they don't do Haunted Mansion Holiday at Magic Kingdom because it might be that family's one trip to Disney World and they want them to see the classic Haunted Mansion. <laughs> But you'll have a ride that's priced out and that you might not even get on. Their signature ride in that park. Yeah. Is that the argument? What? About Haunted Mansion? Yeah. Yes. Wow. That's the reason they've said that they won't do Haunted Mansion Holiday at, uh, at Magic Kingdom. But isn't that the same thing at it's Disneyland? The same at Disneyland. It's the same no, thing, No, right? because <laughs> the argument at Disneyland is that probably 80%, or maybe not 80%, about 70% of Disneyland's visitors are locals and annual pass holders, uh. which isn't the same. The, the, the amount of first-time visitors to Disney World way outweighs that that you get out of Disneyland. Yeah, and that's, yeah that's where I, it comes I see from. that, but I still think that's a cheap excuse. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's cheap. That does not make sense no. to me. It's like um, Universal saying that they, they didn't do the interactive Transformers at Universal Studios Florida, but we'll do it at mm. Universal Studios mm-hmm. Hollywood because there's more of a language barrier in Orlando, which is... Oh, what? Yeah. yeah, exactly. That yeah, was the yeah. reason we heard that there was there was more foreign, like less foreign travelers or something that uh-huh. go... I don't know. What the heck does that have to do with anything? I have no idea. And uh, my argument is you've got Donkey's Photo finished literally across the way, which is exactly the same thing. Mm-hmm. But anyway. And, well, every character in the park yeah. only speaks English. Yeah, so yeah. what? I don't get yeah, it. That's true. Any yeah. excuse is a good one. Okay. Oh, I wish we had them, though. They're awesome. Well, virtual yeah. lines, blah. I'm trying to think if we used it. I know we were trying to get one for Jimmy Fallon when we sat in... Uh, Finnegan's we were trying to get it and I think it ended up just being a walk on so we just went anyway yeah but we've never used it I can't be bothered with it exactly it's like you look at we watched all the videos when Rise of the Resistance opened and you just got like the tip is get to the park and as soon as it turns 9 o'clock have your phone ready to go to, and yeah. it's just like what the hell like who needs mm-hmm. that stress enough already yeah no it's, thanks it's one of the reasons why that I honestly not dread going over there because I want to make a trip to go over there to go finally see, you know, yeah. Star Wars and all that. But it's just, I'd literally probably have to like sit down with somebody to, to really go, okay, what do I have to do? And it's just kind of annoying. Well, that's why I know you're, it's put you off. Completely. And I, you're not the only Are you person. Tracy? Yeah. 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 It, it, it's a pain in the ass anyway. Before yeah. you're planning this, to go in September. Hollywood Studios is the plan. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it just Well, depending uh, on the date, I can escort you. You'll have your very own travel tour guide. You can take her to the front of the line too, or mm. <laughs> yeah. no, I'm already th- I'll I'll take a trip. <laughs> I'm already saying Maddie, if you if you're listening, I'm already thinking about tapping Maddie up for uh, see if she can <laughs> swing as anything in Galaxy's Edge. <laughs> Hey, I've tried. <laughs> yeah, but I'm the pod she, father, don't forget. 
That's true. <laughs> but she kind of needs that thing called her job. So yes, I, I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Cool. Yes. Like, let's move on because we actually managed to stretch that out quite far. I'm quite impressed. Um, That's what she said. So, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Tracy, some producers club birthdays. We have a lot. Uh, yeah, we do actually. Uh, we're going to start with new members who we've already missed their birthdays because they weren't members at the time. Uh, we are going. To, we're going all the way back to November. So on the fourth of November, it was Melinda Dodson's birthday. Happy birthday, Melinda! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! We had a lot of new members recently, by the way. A lot. Yes, yeah. that's awesome. And on the 30th of November, it was Adam Dworkin's birthday. Happy birthday, Adam. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Adam. And then in December on the 13th, it was Danny Brigham's birthday. Happy birthday, Danny. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And I'm assuming this is a relation because the 1st of January is Hope Brigham's birthday. Happy birthday, Happy Hope. Birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah, it's his other half. Yeah. <laughs> and, and last of the new producers, on the 11th of March, it was Hannah Newcomb's birthday. Happy birthday, Hannah. Happy Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Belated, belated birthdays and welcome to the gang. Yeah. Wow. That's a lot. Yes. Some cool last names too. That's a great one, isn't it? Uh, and yeah. we are on to the next, the next two weeks. We've got... A lot. Nine, Holy is mo- that? Wow. Okay, so there's a lot of cake coming. We, some uh, recognizable names mm-hmm. in here and all. We are going to start mm-hmm. with birthday twins. I don't think they are actually twins. <laughs> no. 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 Um, on the 17th of April, it is going to be the lovely Becky Tyler's birthday. Happy birthday, Becky. Happy birthday, Becky. Happy birthday, Becky. Happy birthday. And your birthday twin is Ian Hughes. Happy birthday, Ian. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and the following day on the 18th of April, it is Matthew Lynch's birthday. Have a great birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. I'm trying to think of a way of changing it up rather than just saying the same thing. I know. I can't that's, think why, of anything. that's why I stumbled then. And then the 19th, it is the fantastic Jacqueline Culpit's birthday. Happy birthday, Jacqueline. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday, Jacqueline. I can't think of anything. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, Jacqueline. Happy birthday, Jacqueline. Oh. And we awesome. have more birthday twins on the 20th of April. <laughs> we have the fabulous Chad Day's birthday. Happy birthday, Chad. Happy, Happy white birthday, birthday, Chad. <laughs> Happy birthday. Make sure you have a Michelob. <laughs> and a, a daiquiri. <laughs> I do like a daiquiri. <laughs> and Wear your white pants. Yes. <laughs> and also the 20th. <laughs> it is. I, I'm running out of things to say. <laughs> <laughs> the, the illustrious. Oh, that's a good oh, one. Oh, this is the illustrious Johnny Griswold's birthday. Happy birthday, Happy birthday Johnny. Johnny. Happy birthday, Johnny. Feliz cumpleaños as well. Johnny has just had her birthday trip where she came over here. Mm. She went yeah. to London and then went up to Edinburgh, but we never got a chance just, to meet no. because she had to fly. It was cheaper than getting on the train, apparently. Wow. Doesn't surprise me. And then on the 22nd of April, we have the lovely Aaron Rifkin's birthday. Happy birthday, Aaron. Happiest of birthdays. Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy, happy birthday. <laughs> and wrapping it up, we have birthday twins again. We have... Well, you know what I always call him. It's what everyone calls him. I know. We, it's the best name ever. We have the amazing Benny Batcave's birthday. Or as I call him, Batcave. Or everybody Batcave, says. why would Benny you? Batcave. It's awesome. I'd change it if I was you, Benny. Happy birthday anyway, Benny. Hope you have a great day. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Birthday happy. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, we have a very special friend. The lovely, lovely Tyler Bowman's birthday. Happy birthday, Tyler. Happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday. Happy birthday, Mr. Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> so happy birthday to you all. I hope you have a lovely day. I had a lovely day. I'd get lots of cake and presents. Wow. Yeah. And now I'm good for Tracy, I hope you're hungry because there's a lot of cake. <laughs> that is a list of birthdays. Yes. yes. I'm going to plug it as well. If you want to join the Producers Club, we're still about, well, you can join now at a reduced rate. We renew it at the end of July, but people are still joining. As I say, I think we've got five. Well, everyone you heard at the beginning there has joined in the last week or two. Um, just drop us a, an email to uopproducers at gmail.com and you can have your birthday posthumously. I know they're not dead, but it's the only word I can think of. Read out on belatedly? the Belatedly? There you go, belatedly. God, I like the word posthumously. posthumously. 
So moving on, it is time for a rate my crepe from Mr. Kurt Gumba. Ooh. Hi, you you OP crew. This is Kurt Gumbar from Sharon, Massachusetts, south of Boston, submitting a rate my crepe review. As you can tell, I'm not recording this in the park because, well, my kid and I go way too hardcore and don't stop for anything in the parks, and I just couldn't find a good place to record while we were there. Anyway, we were able to try out the cookies and cream crepe. It's a cold crepe as opposed to the warm crepes, which are the savory ones. For the savory crepes, they make a fresh crepe for you. It appears for the dessert ones, they have a supply of pre-made crepes that get delivered from another location in the park. The cookies and cream crepe was larger than expected compared to crepes I've had in Montreal, which was kind of cool. It was creatively topped with non-dairy whipped cream topping and cookie crumbles, followed by a creamy layer of what seemed like a less dense version of cake frosting. The bottom layer of the crepe was crumbled Oreo cookie, which I loved as it was an opposition of textures between the crunchy cookies and the chewy crepe. My final verdict? I'm going to give it a 4.5 or a heck yeah, as opposed to a full on hell yeah. It was not perfect, but it was definitely up there and worth the price. My daughter, however, stated that she would have rated it a 5 out of 5, but due to the fact that she had to wait 35 minutes for it due to a long line and the time it took to make other savory crepes for guests in front of her, she gives it a 4. Thanks again, UUOP crew, for being the best out there, and I hope to see you all at the park the next time you get there. So I didn't know that they already had like this this dessert ones pre-made and then they're only making the savory ones. And it, as soon as Kurt said it there, makes it sense. makes a lot of sense. But surely they can have two windows, one making the hot ones and one making the cold ones to cut down on those lines. Because like he said, his daughter had to wait yeah. for one that didn't really need to be waited for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Would cut down on... Because we've said this as well with over at... Um, green eggs and ham for what they are it takes such a long time for something that's relatively easy to make well i've that must be something new because when i had a crepe i don't remember how long ago that was now but i got a savory and a dessert when i got the nutella strawberry one Mm -hmm. with cool whip on it and Mm. it was not pre-made they made it in front of me yeah but was the crepe pre-made uh no no, they make no they made it so you have a dessert one in a hot crepe? Yeah. So that seems weird. What were you going to well, say? Well, they let it cool off a little bit. Yeah. Like before they put it together, they set it to the side. But yeah. Okay. So what I was going to say was, obviously you don't want crepes that are like hours and hours old, but crepes heat up really quickly. So they could be... Just slap it on the thing. Yeah, and... just on a hot plate. A few well, seconds each side for the hot ones. They could be pre-made and, and say every like, 40 minutes to an hour bring out fresh batches because so, that would cut down on yeah, time yeah it's so weird again like say with green eggs and ham they've got these two places that are so popular mm. and just can't handle the influx of people th- who are I do think seeing the crepe made as well though is part of the experience it is but do you want to wait an hour for it I'm not exactly <laughs> <laughs> they just need to move it to a different location where it's an actual like like a window rather than a rather than yeah like maybe a, it's, yeah. yeah yeah maybe it's taken off now enough that they know it's popular going off what uh michelle was saying like not just move it i like i like that being there but just add a location somewhere else so yes. you can mm-hmm. like if i want to get a crepe i can also go here yeah, yeah because it is so popular and it seems like it doesn't seem to be decreasing in popularity no, no. either i mean i don't know what green eggs and hams like now popularity wise when it's open it's busy yeah, and yet they still haven't figured it. It's like people want to, but like I don't understand why they don't make them in Circus McGurkis. Like you've got a place that's the <laughs> put something in there that people want to actually go in and eat there for. Mm-hmm. Because I love Circus McGurkis. It's just the food's awful. You give people a reason to go in there because I love sitting in there. I love, yeah. I've said this many, many times before. Any restaurant or any other attraction that interacts with another attraction i love yeah like um mm-hmm. pinocchio's village house when we went there back in 2013 we got sat right at the window so we were waving at all the people getting on it's a small world and it's brilliant i love that mm-hmm. but there's no reason to go into circus McGurkis. <laughs> yeah make circus McGurkis a crepe facility with like a toppings choice like where you can tell them what kind of chop- toppings you want to put on it you can create your own crepes 
I mean, there's I mean, a similar experience now at Disney over by Ratatouille in the France France Pavilion at Epcot. There's a whole restaurant now for crepes. That makes sense over there. Mm-hmm. I don't even think I've anyway. ever had a crepe. Crepe. Sorry, sorry, Brian. A crepe. We'll say that uh, review from Kurt was also probably one of the most professional ones. <laughs> it really had. was. It really like it was. was. It, it sounded like a uh, commercial almost. <laughs> yeah. It was great. Speaking of which. <laughs> yes. If you would like to submit your rating of your crepes to us, just send us <laughs> No, not your email. crepes. You want the ones at Universal. Don't just make them at home and rate them ones. <laughs> well, I mean. I know. You could. I'm just pulling you. Like, well, you um, could. Anyway, <laughs> send us an email at podcast at uupodcast.com and tell us if it is a one being er. Or anywhere up to a five being, hell yeah. We need them because we've only got three left. And if we don't get any more, we're going to call it and then do the official the official rankings. Yes. So, moving on. As we said earlier, for want, it is a very slow news week. I will be honest, I held off doing the show notes till uh, last Friday because I was expecting a Halloween Horror Nights announcement because going off... Um, your co-host Kenneth Bandmate's um, thing that he does every year of putting the dates down for when the house is announced. We should have had a house announcement by now because every year since at least 2017, we'd have had a house announcement in March and we have not had one. Um, mm-hmm. But I will say, speaking of Halloween Horror Night, don't forget Russia Fee is now on its own feed, so go and subscribe because their new one, I assume, should be out in a couple of days, Michelle. Uh, yeah, the 13th of every month. Okay, just checking. Um, yep, so yep. yeah, go and subscribe so you don't miss it because it will not be in our feed. Sweet. You will find yep. them wherever you find us. But in the meantime, as we've been kind of delving into Universal Orlando a little bit more and a bit more in depth this year with not doing our um, complete guide, I thought I'd fill in this space with um, a post that Universal put up with there, 10 things you must do at Universal Orlando City Walk and say whether we agree with them or not. And we're going to start off with number one, which is indulge in a fantastical milkshake from Toothsome Chocolate Emporium and Savory Fees Kitchen. If you went to Universal and didn't get a Toothsome milkshake, did you even go? Well, apparently not, because I've never had one. <laughs> uh, these milkshakes are the must-get treat during your vacation for not only the deliciousness but also the photo that will have everyone wishing they were in your shoes has anybody tried one of these? I have and uh, to me it's disgusting <laughs> <laughs> why? What sorry milkshake? I love Toothsome and I think they're beautiful like it's very Instagram worthy but it did not taste good it was too much and very like the desserts on it that top it tasted very mass produced. Uh, what did you have, Michelle? Oh God, it was so long ago now. Probably the cheesecake one, knowing me. Sounds good. And but somebody else at my table had something chocolatey too. Again, mm. very pretty, but it was just too much. I've heard the I biggest. Agree. Cu- the, have you had one, Chris? A milkshake? Yeah. Yeah, we've had it like maybe on two different visits over the entire time we've you know times we've gone there and i think michelle kind of hits it on the head where they're gorgeous like they really make them look pretty but it it doesn't have that like craft dessert taste okay that you would think that you'd get from like a chocolate factory it tastes you know more simple i guess i don't know how to describe that but yeah i wish i wish it, it, it had more of that you know craftness behind it than just a milkshake I think the biggest complaint I heard was they were quite watery. Eh, depends on who makes it, I think, because mine haven't been watery when I've had them. Would you have one? Uh, it depends on... I'd have to test out how I am with milk now. Because Jade wants one, but I'm me and her are going to get one together. Yeah. Because she won't finish one for the start. No. I don't know. I, I, I'll have to test how I am with milk. The Mardi, I haven't had milk in like three years. The Mardi Gras one this year looks amazing, by the way. Uh-huh. I don't know whether you guys have seen amazing. it. It looks amazing. I have not. It's sweet potato. Yeah. It's that oh. ube, that ube stuff. You know, there's that bubble waffle thing at Mardi Gras this year. It's that ube ice cream. So it's sweet potato, but apparently it doesn't taste what like sweet with, potato. Is that the one with the yuzu? Possibly. The it's got like a little 
saxophone, a little biscuity yeah. saxophone thing. Yeah, so there was top. one. I can't, was that another one that had Yuzu in it? And I love Yuzu. That does look cool. Yeah, it does look good. I mean, I want to you try did. one. I just have to see how I am. Yeah. So. I got faith in you, Tracy. Well, if I have one and it goes wrong, just make sure you're in front of me. Raymond will probably end up <laughs> finishing it off. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. So, number two. Try the epic fusion of burgers and sushi at the Cowfish Sushi Burger Bar. Oh, yeah. Is it sushi? Is it a burger? It's both. Burgushi combines the best of both worlds into unique dishes you can find only at the Cowfish. Tip for you all. City Walks restaurants are pretty busy during lunch and dinner time, especially during peak seasons. Yeah, don't yeah no. That. Lee's just copied and pasted. <laughs> so, so try going at a different time. But then isn't dinner and lunch time the time when you're hungry? Yeah, but if you go a little later, have a, have a, a snack. And then go between dinner and lunch. It's going to be quiet. Now, I don't know whether you guys are going to agree with this, but I found whenever we go to a restaurant at City Walk, there's a half hour wait regardless of how many people are in there. Even when you've got a table booked. Or <laughs> they'll try and book yeah, you. Or, yeah. you, or you'll book a table for eight o'clock and then you'll get one of your party to go, Chris, can you ring Toothsome and see if they can change it? And they go, we've got you booked in for 8 a.m. And you go, you don't even open at 8 a.m. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, but that's the time we got you booked for. That was weird. That, that was weird. Anyway. Yeah. I love cowfish now. I know it's weird, isn't it? <laughs> Dude, cowfish is awesome. I mean, like the burgushi is literally one of my favorite things to eat at any restaurant uh-huh. just because it's so unique. Is that what you had me with there? The cheeseburger. Well, when we ate together? Yeah. Yeah, is that yeah che- that's like, good. Yeah, then in that case, then yes, as I finished it, yeah, I can vouch for that. Yeah, I know, Michelle, <laughs> you love the bagushi as well, don't you? Hey, oh my god, I dream <laughs> so about it. I, re- I swear to you, every time we go, we eat there. Yep. And it, like, I have to get it. We'll try to eat somewhere else, but I have to have a bagushi. It's just right? so weird how night and day our two experiences at I Cowfish know. have been. I don't know whether I want to go third time <laughs> because it's because I wasn't there the first time. I mean, man. it could have been that because you weren't. Yeah. But I just, yeah. I wish I'd known how big that burger I'd ordered was before I ordered it. It was pretty. Uh, you were fine. You had Tracy with you. <laughs> yeah, and still only had, so had like half of it left. What was the matter oh. with me that day? I was a human dustbin. I think it's one of those restaurants as well that you could go multiple, multiple times. And because the, the menu is so extensive, yeah. there's so much choice. <laughs> and it's just, yeah, I definitely, it's, it's, mm-hmm. When we come over this year, there's a couple of restaurants we need to tick off yes. the list of places we haven't. Actually, I think there's one. There's one place we haven't. There's two we haven't eaten at, but oh one. God, you add up. Right, there's two we haven't eaten at. One I'm not bothered about because I can go literally to one of them anywhere in the world. Uh, I've, oh, I've, yeah. I've eaten at one before. Anyway, so there's one that we haven't eaten at. And then when we come back, I want to do an episode ranking the main restaurants of, of, Universal, okay. uh, of Universal City Walk. Um, well, that's a good idea. Yeah, which, like I say, we the reason I haven't done it yet is because we haven't been to Vivo yet. No. Oh. I know, I know. Oh. I know. Lee's fault, Love not mine. Vivo. But what I was going to say was, Cowfish has snuck up. It's probably number three at this point. For Have me. you gone to Big Fire? Yes. Love Big loved Fire. It. Oh, loved I remember it. that. See, Big Fire's low on my list. Really? Well, we talked about this. I, I, we went, like, close to opening... And yeah. it was just oh, you did. okay. Yes, you're right. You reviewed yeah. it for the show, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. for us, it was like it was, stars it was okay. aligned. We went with Stuart and Claire, yeah. and we were just Good four food. heads. Yeah, great, great <laughs> server, great food. Uh, yeah, it was. We were we literally were the last ones in there while they were cleaning yeah. up around us. It was such a good night. We bumped into you know, name dropping. We bumped into Mike Aiello before we went in. It was just, it was just probably as much the whole experience as the food itself. But mm. it's just, it, I, 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 I love Big Fire. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I want to go back. I just every time I get stuck going back to get a burgushi. Yeah, it's yeah. difficult. Or Vivo. <laughs> Tracy and I have had this conversation. It's too easy to go to the places you know you like rather than step out of your comfort zone and go to other places. And we've done it far too often. And it's easier yeah. for you, Chris, because you go a lot more regular than we do. Whereas with us, it's but, like I don't want to risk going somewhere I'm not going to like because we might not get back out for another few years. But on the flip side of that, it's it's the same. That reason that you just said is the same reason why I never go there. Because when we go, it's like a quick weekend trip. 
So I don't have as many meals to eat mm, through. Yes. So I'm like, I really want to eat this meal as opposed to like if we were doing a much longer stay, then okay, I have available meals that I can kind of throw yeah. us in and see. Yeah. You know, so it's kind of like it can get you both ways. That's my problem too, Chris, because when I go down, it's usually only for, you know, two, Couple three days, nights. Yeah. And I'm like, oh God. One, I don't want to have to come out of the parks to mm-hmm. go to the city walk when I've doing stuff in the parks and then yeah i'm like but do i really want to give up my favorite meal to mm-hmm. go do yeah, something i might not like yep. yeah we it's need to decide one. where we're going to have our our family meal when yes. we're over in october uh, in november yes because we've done cowfish we did two some last time so we need to do somewhere else next time nice we'll all have a think play a round or two of miniature golf at hollywood drive-in golf not many can say they've golfed through a space worm or a haunted house during their vacation, but you can. These two mini golf courses are themed to the classic sci-fi and horror flicks of the 1950s. Now, let me take a wild stab in the dark. I don't think Michelle or Chris have done either of these. Nope. Nope. And you yell at me every time. Oh, my God. You are missing out so on good. something that Universal offers that is so, so good. I think a lot of people do miss out. It. It's expensive. I would it go is. as far as to say it is f-ing expensive. Because yeah. we were going to do it in February when we came over with Jade and it was just like, holy f- I am not it's paying that. It's got up that. price as well. It was massively expensive. But it is worth it. It's awesome. It, it's not the price that deters me. Like, obviously, it's expensive for mini golf. But, like, my excuse is I won't do it during the summer, for sure. No. Or any other. And when I say summer, I'm talking, like, March to... November because it's just hot. <laughs> it's hot. January uh, to December. Then, yeah, we only have like one or two months to to actually do it. And then when we do it, since you know we're not taking long trips, then it goes back to what we were just talking about. Like, am I going to sacrifice this time that I could use in the parks? Mm-hmm. You know, we're going there during Grinchmas, like the time I would play when it's cool, right? But Grinchmas is going on and there's like a thousand things and every year there's like something more and you you can suck up an entire weekend just on Grinchmas alone. So we need to do a mini golf tournament team tournament for the weekender. Oh, that would be it good. It would be awesome. Then we'll all be able to say that we've done cool. it. I wonder how much it would <laughs> yeah. cost to rent it out for a couple of hours. I don't know. We'll have to look at that. It's or maybe so at the very least get group rates. Yeah. But Chris, like as yeah. far as you need to do it at night anyway. Because mm-hmm. that's when it's at its best. Oh, yeah. So you're not missing out on park time. I think we've done it two or three times. I feel like we've definitely done both of them. I don't know we whether did we did it a third yeah. time. We might have only I done guess. it twice. I want to do it. But. I wish they would throw it in with their vacation packages for free. Kind of like yeah. the free entry to City Walk you know, um, clubs and stuff. Yeah. Because Disney actually does that when you, they're they call them magical extras. So when you book a package, they give you one round of mini golf at one of their mini golf courses. Right. I've never used them, but I wish universal would do that. I know if I remember rightly, when you've finished your round, they give you a scratch card and you can win like 10% off or a free game. Yeah. Or whatever. Mm. That's cool. Yeah. Makes it yeah. fifty dollars for mini golf. Here's ten percent off for true. <laughs> yeah, it's right. Uh, it is. It is expensive. Mm. Yep. All right. Number four. Stop by Voodoo Donut for a big pink box of donuts. Why is there Voodoo a dot doll? dot dot there? By the way, I don't know, but I read it. <laughs> <laughs> Voodoo doll, grape ape, Portland cream. No, these aren't band names. They're donuts from Voodoo Donut. Choose from traditional or whimsical flavors and make sure to ask if they have any specialty donuts. They also have vegan options like the ODB, which is so good. I wouldn't know because I've never had it. Like borderline flawless, absolutely delicious. Tip, skip the line and order your box of donuts ahead of time by mobile ordering through the Universal Orlando Resort app. I'm going to be controversial now and I don't think at least from my experience, the Voodoo Donuts is all that. I've been so... It's very like, gimmicky. Yeah. Like, it's cool. Like, look, don't get me wrong. I love that it's a part of City Walk because it's mm-hmm. just something out of the norm, completely different. But I haven't been overly impressed other than maybe the Voodoo doll, that first one we had. I haven't been mm. overly impressed with anything 
yet. But to be fair, I haven't actually had that many either. I mean, we, we only got a coffin last time. Yeah, yeah but I don't actually yeah. think, I think I had three bits because I was mm. too busy. Yeah. Go recording. Yeah. And he didn't have any apple fritters either. They were amazing. Uh, I, I would go against what you're saying, Lee. I, I actually enjoy these. Alexa and I both enjoy eating them. I would say these donuts are better at being donuts than to some milkshakes are at being milkshakes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a good... Okay. Yeah. 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 I think I've just made... Like, it's been a while as well. Bad choice. I mean, mm-hmm. we had the canolos last time oh, we were there. They were terrible. awful. They were... The, Those are... Yeah, no, no. That's... The stuff was so synthetic. No. You can find your donut... You got to yeah. find your donut too. Yes. That's the other thing. Because like we have like donuts that we have to get every yeah. time. Um, we'll try like one new one every time and be like, yeah. this sucks. But mm-hmm. find your donut. I love the fact that they do the specialty ones. You know, they'll do a Horror Nights one or they'll do a Christmas one or yeah. a Pass Holder one or a Mardi Gras right. one. You know, it's, it is it is gimmicky, and, but it's I love it. And it's it's such a great addition mm-hmm. to City Walk, whether you like the donuts or not, to be quite honest. Yeah. I think yeah, the my my donut can... is the uh, the blueberry cake. Yes, one. yeah, that yeah. Is, oh. That is really good. Wasn't that the blueberry old fashioned? Is that what it's called? I think it's, it's just a blueberry so. cake. It's it's the cake batter. Yeah, rather than donut batter. The one I want mm. is the Memphis Mafia. I'm desperate for the Memphis Mafia, mm. but I've never been hungry enough to think I want that because it's massive. Is that the peanut butter one? Uh, it's banana. It might be peanut. It's got butter. All, I think it has chocolate chips and peanut yes. butter. Yeah. On yeah. top, yeah. Because it doesn't look like a donut. It looks like a like a Danish, to be quite mm. honest. But yeah, it's such a good addition. Whether like you say whether you like them or not, just everyone has to go and get a photo in the in the throne and it's just it's awesome. I just want them to, them to do crawlers. Yes. They're my favourites. <laughs> or uh, uh what's that? Um the I would love donut holes. Mm. What's a croissant donut called? A cronut. There you go. Cronut. No, 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 no. I do like a cronut. Anyway, number five, get the ultimate sports fan experience at NBC Sports Grill and Boo, which we may well do when we are over oh, in November because be I've just found out that the World Cup is happening when we're over for the weekend. Yes. So that would be interesting if England is still in it at that point. Well, true. Uh, you don't have to miss the game just because you're on vacation. Catch any league game here while enjoying good food like a giant soft pretzel, which I do want to try because I uh-huh. love pretzels, and a cold one from a selection of over 100 beers. Real there are too. foosball tables, literally a table where you can eat and also play foosball. Cool. Foosball. I love this table. place. I We've like only actually eaten in here once. I go there just for the pretzel. Fair enough. I went for I the do flight. I like a pretzel. Yes, you did have a flight when we they went were, with the and, popcorn doctor, didn't and, you? Yeah, and the, the bartender was amazing because I wanted the IPA flight and they did not have any of the IPAs in. So she actually put together one own, for yeah. me just from what they had. And it yeah. was really, really good. She made some good choices. Like sports bars yes. aren't a thing over here. But from like watching no. American movies and TV, it felt like a sports mm-hmm. bar. I know it is, but it, just, <laughs> it was pretty cool. Be cool to get to see a match there. Yeah, it'd be awesome. You know, that would be cool. And the England take English take over, and we get beat by Germany probably. After that, you can sing your heart out, at Rising Star, with a live karaoke band. And if you've ever dreamed of becoming a singer, Rising Star makes that dream reality. Take to the stage with backup singers and a live band on selected nights, and belt out your favourite songs in this rocking karaoke experience. I've had a look at the menu. I'm not impressed. It's not oh, about what? the menu. The menu of songs. Yeah, I'm not impressed. Oh, I thought you meant menu of like food and beverages. (laughs) No, no. The menu of songs you get to choose from, I was disappointed. Uh There was nothing on there I would do. What? Yeah. Dude, it's a huge list. Yeah, there wasn't. Not that I saw anyway. Wow. Holy moly. I'd have to have a couple of drinks for me to I love this place. Yeah. It's fun. You've got to make a visit, even if you don't sing. But we are, aren't we? It's for the show. The plan is, anyway, we'll don't spoil it. No, it's so fun. Love it. I never sing, but I love to go and watch everybody mm. else sing. Mm, next time. <laughs> All of us. Yes. Yes, yes. Um, number seven, end your day roasting s'mores and savoring smoky spirits at Big Fire. Yes. Open fire cooking, check. S'mores table side, check. An extensive list of whiskey and bourbon, check. Big Fire is where you go to have summer vacation vibes year-round with smoky flavors reminiscent of camping and backyard barbecues. Yes. 
Chris, uh, not Chris, you weren't even there with us. Stuart had an old fashioned, didn't he? And the whole yes. production oh, it of it was it was, experience. It was it amazing. It was pretty awesome. And it tasted really good. We also had the uh, table side s'mores, which were uh, they're all right. You lot did. Yeah, you didn't have any, did you? I only had one. Can't remember what. Don't think you had anything, did you? No, I don't think Michelle, so. have you actually eaten in here? I have not. We have to change Again, that. I've I had a reservation for it my last trip, but I gave it up to go to <laughs> Cowfish. <Bro Gucci>. <laughs> 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 well, you need to go because we can't rank all these restaurants yeah. if no one, if everyone hasn't eaten at them all. It is worth it. I I, I love the place. Maybe that's where we go in November, December, whenever the hell it is. Who knows? Pick out the perfect gift or souvenir from the Universal Studios store. You won't want to miss stopping by this big, and I'm talking big, store jam-packed with all the Universal theme gifts and souvenirs you could ever want. Now, here's a tip. Don't feel like carrying around bags all day in the theme parks. Who does? <laughs> uh, you can have your purchases delivered here for you to pick up as you're heading out, which is very handy. Yeah, or if you're staying at a hotel, get them delivered to the hotel. Yep. I can't yes. wait to get into this store because we still haven't. It's all new. It's all new yes. since the last time we were there. Yes, it is. It's just a store. Though, isn't it? It's a store. There's though. not much to say. <laughs> no. It's literally the same stuff you can buy anywhere else in the parks. Hmm. Uh, yeah. It's a cool store, though. Yeah. yeah. To be fair, I'm more looking forward to going to the Legacy store, which isn't on this list, surprisingly oh, enough. Yeah. Ah, and number nine, enjoy a stone baked pizza from Red Oven Pizza Bakery. Um. Mm. Yeah, no, I'm not saying that. This is some good pizza. <laughs> yes, it is. It is some good pizza. Uh, these made-to-order pies are baked in a stone-lined oven with a variety of both Blanco and Rosso pizzas. Grab one to go and sit by the City Walk Lagoon for a great view or enjoy outside seating, which we have, and it rained, um, while getting some great people watching in. I love Red Oven. I think we've eaten there twice so far, and it's cheap. The pizza's really good. I love we got to sit out on the front and, like, the... The sort of bar. I literally just said that yeah. where it rained. Yeah. Yeah. Because we Maddie mm -hmm. and um Ethan were there and it's just mm. I love I love being moved. able to sit and look out in into City Walk, like kind of that outside inside thing and well, you and disappeared, just, didn't you? I went and took a lot of pictures. Oh, that's right. But I love red oven. And then you missed the pizza. Yeah, it's good pizza. It's I needed delicious. to try it. I haven't tried it. Yeah. Really? It, it, Michelle. It's, really? You know, it, it's basic, but it's good, it's tasty and freshly made and yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's good. It, it's, it's, one, it's delicious. Yeah, it's one of those places where you, if you can't decide where to go and you just want something that's that's filling and tasty, just just get it here. That's it. It's that it's quite easy. thin crust as well, so it's not that overly dense stuff, so you're not going to get like massively full, but enough that it's a decent meal if you mm. get a couple of pizzas between two or three of you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Number 10. Spend the evening listening to your choice of live music. End your busy day at the theme parks by un unwinding with live music from one of City Walk's many venues. From reggae jams to full-blown rock concerts, here are a few of my favorite spots. Yeah, just like uh, There wasn't anything else on the end of that. So tell us your favorite spots, Michelle. Yeah, go on. I <laughs> uh, <laughs> can't say I've ever sat and just listened to live music while I was at Universal. What? Well, some places have closed, haven't they? There's like Julian Pianos at um, Bob Bob Brian's. That was great. And that. Um, Go to Marley's. Uh -huh. No. <laughs> no. No. And I haven't heard yes. good things about Bob Marley. Really? Yeah. It's phenomenal out there. Darren hated we it. Go Darren used to complain every... about it all the time. He hated it. What do you hate about it? He just didn't like it. He said the food was crap and it was crap. Just crap. You, this, no, this the is about food the music. Is delicious. I was talking about the music. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah no, is, the food's also music. really good, but you gotta like, like Caribbean style food. So yes, if you like flavors and spices, you're probably not gonna like this place because there's a lot of it in there. But uh, the drinks are great. A lot of rum drinks there. Of course. Uh, food's great, and at nighttime when they have a literal like full reggae band every night of the week. And it is just awesome to go out there and, and hear some live reggae. Oh, I would like that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. Have either of you two seen anyone at the Hard Rock Live? No. 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 Because it's usually some, they are decent. Mm -hmm. I know um, 
Hollywood Babylon recorded there, which would have been, I'd have loved to see Kevin Smith and Ralph Garman there, would have been amazing. I know it's not music, but, you know, there's comedians and stuff there as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be cool. It'd be awesome. Cool. Well, considering it was a snow news week, we managed to stretch that out quite well, to be fair. Don't forget, which one of us do you think has COVID? Email in at podcast at <laughs> uulpodcast.com. I want, and if anyone, if no one emails it in with a guess, I'll be disappointed. <coughs> Because I've been... Stop trying to swear people, you. <laughs> we should have all been like... I'm not going to say who it is. I'm not going to give you any hints, but one of us has COVID. It's like Among Us, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, that is going to wrap up this episode of the Unofficial Universal Orlando Podcast, and we are going to end with the Universal Is, and Corey Hall submitted this one, but if you want to get involved, all you've got to do is let us know what you think Universal is in three words or less, and send them to podcast at you or podcast.com, or however you want to get them to us, but for this episode, Corey says Universal Is where it started. See you next week, everyone. That was another episode of the Unofficial Universal Orlando Podcast. The best and only podcast about Universal Orlando on the island. Check us out on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Pinterest. Just search UUO Podcast. For all the podcasts, news, and articles, check out our blog at uuopodcast.com. Send us your questions, comments, and listener debate submissions to podcast at uuopodcast.com. Join the Producers Club by emailing us at uuopproducers at gmail.com. Listen and subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and everywhere else podcasts are found. Check out our friends, the Theme Park Duo, for all your other theme park news, and use our awesome sponsors, Mouse and Muggle Travel Company, to book your next trip. So until next time, this is Amity 6, call off the Marines, we're coming home! <laughs>